like, comment, and subscribe for more content. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Popcast. I'm DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And today, we are going to talk about the remaining Funko Pop announcements for the month of October 2019. Plus, we got ourselves a top 10 list because it is a part two episode. So we're going to talk about the top 10 list that we have made for October 2019. But obviously, we're going to kick off with the first four pops that you'll see on your screen right now. So we got ourselves a previews exclusive Thanos. It's a pop deluxe, actually. This is expected to be released. I actually don't know the exact date. Like, I've visited like three websites trying to get like the different dates. Some say December, some say February, and some say March. So I don't. So it's between either the end of the year or the beginning of 2020. That's when that will happen. After that, we have ourselves a green version of Chet from the Fantastic Plastic lineup, and that is exclusive to Funko Shop. Obviously, it was released on October 18th at 11 a.m. PST, 2 p.m. EST. Then, from the movie Dune, we have ourselves a newer version of, or well, not a newer version, a different version of Fade Ratha. And we got ourselves Paul Atreides. I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. But these are expected to be released as early as February 2020. And then we got ourselves... This one was very hyped by a lot of people. I'll get to that in a bit. Is Waldo. Obviously, you'll know that it's from Where's Waldo? The book and stuff. And that is expected to be released as early as February 2020. Also, man, this Pop Deluxe is sweet. I like the whole idea of the base being just a pile of skulls. You can tell, like, you can see the comic, too, that's basically based off that. I think that's also, like, a Funko-made, like, comic, and you could buy either the pop itself or do, like, a, a deal with the pop and the comic. Oh. And I love the metallic detail on Theodos' gear. It is sweet, and him snapping his fingers. That's probably the best part of this pop is the snapping of the fingers because I don't think we've had a Thanos pop that has been snapping his fingers yet, which everyone's been wanting if you're a fan of the MCU. Even the skulls that he's standing on is pretty detailed. It's also pop skulls, if you realize that. It's all in the shape of, like, pop heads and stuff, which is sweet. Then moving on to the Chet, it's okay. I feel like the original one is better. However, watching, like, an unboxing of this from Funko's channel... This pop actually, I think the green is more like metallic -y. It looks like to me anyways, which is pretty cool. But I just think the original Chet is better than this one. Then the Dune pops. Once again, I've never seen Dune before. I probably mentioned that when these got announced. I think it was, is it New York Comic Con or San Diego? I, yeah, it's New York Comic Con. And I find it, eh. I mean, the, the Fade Ratha is better than the exclusive one because the Fade Ratha only had, like, the one part. And this one's actually got, like, a full suit and he's got a weapon in his hand. And then we got Paul. I can't even pronounce I'll just say Paul. It looks pretty cool. He looks like he has some sort of nose apparatus. And he's got some sort of double-bladed weapon. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's like a sword with, like, two blades that are just, like, short. It's kind of hard to tell about his outfit because it's just all black. But you can see like a little bit of details of like torso armor and stuff like that. Then we got Where's Waldo, which this is a pretty cool pop, actually. I'm actually curious, and so is a lot of people. You can see on the top right corner that it says Where's Waldo 2019 DreamWorks. So a lot of people are thinking there may be a Where's Waldo movie coming out by DreamWorks hmm. in the future, which is why it says that. I think the only thing I don't like about it, though, is the eyes. And that's only because I feel like the pupil of it is, like, too big for Waldo. Usually his eyes are, like, this, like, black dot. But everything else, like, from the smile, the nose, and just his whole appearance, even the hair, they made very detailed. So, As I'm looking at this, he kind of looks like Peter Griffin to me a little bit. I think it is the way that they did the glasses with the eyes, also the smile and the chin line. But, yeah, I guess I agree with you with the eyes. It's kind of weird. I think they could have gone with something else. Maybe if they would have done, like, how sometimes with people with glasses, they just, like, have the normal Popeyes on them, and then they put the glasses over top of those. Yeah. 
it's weird, but when we see it in person, eventually, I guess we can make a better statement towards it. But I do really like this pop, and I think it's one that we all needed. That is weird how it says DreamWorks. I don't know how they would make a Where's Waldo movie unless it's just people looking for Waldo the whole time or something. Yeah, I, guess I, so. I, I don't understand, but it's kind of exciting. The Dune pops are kind of meh. I'm never really a fan of outfits where it's one solid color. I mean, there are a couple other colors on there, but they seem prototypey to me, and that's why I'm just not a huge fan of them. The Chet, I do like. It's a good pop. I would agree with you with the original one probably is better, but this one will probably sell pretty decently, especially being a Funko Shop exclusive and all. Then the Thanos. I'm very impressed with this Thanos. I do love how the skulls have the pop heads, and the wash that they put on these look really good. It makes them look nice and dirty, and all the cracks get filled in real nice. The Thanos is pretty good. I mean, there's not much you can do with Thanos besides different poses and making metallic. So seeing it like this is good, and I also like how it's accurate to the comic book. Moving on now, you'll see nine Funko Pops on your screen, or at least nine Glam Shot photos. All right, just to let everyone know, as I'm editing this podcast, the photos are out of order from what I say. I was supposed to send them in this exact order to MD when I first woke up in the morning, but I guess I must have ruined the actual order. But bear with me, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, and I was still waking up. So... Let's get right to the podcast again. So starting out first, October 21st at 11 a.m. PST, 2 p.m. EST, Funko Shop released their own exclusive of the Scary Library Ghost from Ghostbusters, except this version is translucent, unlike the other one. Then we got ourselves here a two-pack of Jollibee and Hetty Spaghetti, which Obviously, on October 21st, this was originally announced, but later confirmed by Funko on October 27th, which it's first-to-market exclusive, which I think maybe it will only be exclusive. I don't know if it's going to be exclusive in the Philippines or the U.S. stores will have them too. Then we got ourselves 10-inch Michael Jordan Pops, which these have been rumored for quite a bit now, in which one is a common, which is him in the red outfit, and then we have... A Foot Locker exclusive with him in the white jersey, which it's unknown on when these are actually being released, but I think there are pre-orders for them now. Then, very hyped about this, a lot of people are, is an actual wave of the Hunchback and Notre Dame Funko Pops, in which we have ourselves Esmeralda, a normal Quasimodo, and we have Quasimodo as Fool, which those are expected to be released as early as January 2020. Then Blizzard announced some Funko Pops for BlizzCon, which actually, as this gets released on November 1st, that'll be day one. It'll be from November 1st to November 3rd. However, you can order, well, this one that you're currently looking at is the Glow in the Dark Pumpkin Reaper. And then we have, from World of Warcraft, it's Lady Sylvanas in like a gold patina which that will be available at BlizzCon on November 1st up until November 3rd. Then, finally released, everyone's been wanting to know about this for a while, we got ourselves Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon Pop Rides. Everyone's been pre-ordering on Amazon, which is where it's exclusive to. It finally released this month and officially confirmed on the Funko app. Then we have ourselves some exclusive Apex Legends Funko Pops. We have ourselves a pink Pathfinder, which will be exclusive to Target, a tie-dye version of Lifeline, which will be exclusive to Walmart, a white translucent Wraith, which will be exclusive to Amazon, and we have a blue translucent Mirage, which that will be exclusive to EB Games slash GameStop. Then, last but not least, we have ourselves a two-pack bundle, which you could buy these separately if you were at Funko HQ if you wanted to, but obviously they sold them in a two-pack bundle because probably a lot of people would have wanted both of them. And that is Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble from the Flintstones wearing the buffalo hats, which obviously that was released on October 23rd at 11 a.m. PST, 2 p.m. EST on the Funko Shop. Starting off with the Scary Library Ghost, I've seen how this pop turned out, and it was not the greatest. Oh, really? Yeah. The colors are all weird with, like, the nose. It's, it did not turn out as well as I feel like it should. I feel like Translucent was a little weird for this one. I mean, understandable, it's a ghost, so Translucent. But, I mean, a lot of people wanted it to be maybe glow-in-the-dark. 
just using the same pop as the common one. That probably would have turned out better, but this pop definitely did not turn out as well as I feel it should have. Hmm, that's upsetting. Then we have the Jolly Bee 2-pack. Once again, I've probably mentioned this a dozen times that I don't really know much about Jolly Bee, but I do like that he has a bucket of chicken, and the bucket says Chicken Joy. I don't know what it says in the small print, but he's got a bucket of chicken, Jolly Bee just being his normal self, and then adding some more, like, characters from the Jolly Bee franchise into it is pretty cool, I guess, with Hetty Spaghetti. I actually realize now, just looking at this pop a little more, is how, like, her, like, pigtails looks like pasta. Yeah. Like, like straight uh... pasta. Got this, like, cheerleader outfit, which I guess is pretty cool. Then going to the 10-inch Michael Jordan pops, in which they're pretty cool, but they're not, like, the greatest to me anyways. I'm obviously probably not going to get these, considering I also don't even have the normal Michael Jordan. I do like the red jersey one the best, so the common, just because the colors look nice with, like, a red jersey and white shoes. I don't really like how the Foot Locker exclusive has, like, the black shoes. Maybe I feel like it should have been red, because then it would have blown with the colors better of the common. It's just switching them up. I don't know, black and white just seems very weird to me. But overall, I know a lot of people are hyped for this, and a lot of people are going to buy this. However, not a lot of people are hyped that it's going to be a Foot Locker exclusive, because I guess they're known for not sending their pops shipped out that good. But I mean, it's also a 10-inch, so if they have like a box that basically is a sorter, then I guess it may be okay. Then we got the Hunchback and Notre Dame Funko Pops. These are awesome. I love the Esmeralda. A lot of people were hyped when Esmeralda got announced. The Quasimodo as Fool is sweet. I don't know whether I like the Quasimodo as Fool or the San Diego Comic Con Quasimodo better out of the two. It's a very hard decision. They're both like very good in their own ways. And then we got the Quasimodo with like... I remember this scene. He has, like, all the little figurines he's made out of, like, wood. And that's what he's got for this normal Quasimodo one. And I love the facial expressions they make with Quasimodo. The only thing that people hate about this set is that there's no Frollo. For those that don't know, Frollo was the villain. In which I'm already going to predict this. And that the only way we're probably going to get Frollo in a Funko Pop form is if it's in a Pop Town with the church. I feel like that's the way we're going to get it. And then I feel like for something like ECCC, they can do a three-pack of, like, the stone people. Yeah, Kinda like how cool. they did the three-pack of the hyenas for Lion King. Then we got the glow-in-the-dark pumpkin reaper, which it looks pretty cool. At first, I did know my honest opinion of this because I hadn't seen any photos of, like, what it actually looks like glow-in-the-dark until yesterday. At first, I thought it was only going to be, like, the eyes and the mouth that glow, where it's, like, yellow, but it's actually, like, the whole head or anything orange on the outfit huh. that glows in the dark, which makes it a little bit better, actually. It seems like I feel like the Reaper Pops have some of, like, the best exclusives. Like, my favorite Overwatch Pop, even though I don't own it, is the Hellfire Reaper that was exclusive to Walmart. Okay, yeah. Which I really like. Then we got the Lady Sylvanas, or Sylvanas, or whatever her name is, from World of Warcraft, which I guess is cool that they're releasing another World of Warcraft pop. I thought they would have, like, lost the license, and that's why they haven't made any in a while. But I don't know how I feel about it just being a gold patina. I guess overall, if it had some color, it'd be cool, but to me, it's definitely a pass. The Millennium Falcon pop rides is absolutely sweet. This is something I think every single Star Wars fan has been wanting in Funko Pop form for a while and been wondering why there hasn't been a Millennium Falcon Funko Pop rides. I think my only thing I don't like about this pop is the fact that they actually put like a 3.75 inch pop. Yeah. I just, I feel like especially what they should have done with this pop is that they should have done it like the Pizza Planet Pop Rides, where they put like a small figurine, like a little bit smaller than a pocket pop in it. Because then it makes me think like if let's say if I'm not a Star Wars fan, it's like, oh, is this guy really bigger than like the pod where he's driving on? That's what I think. But overall, the whole Millennium Falcon, if you go on Amazon and you go to order this, they actually give you like basically a 360 view. It's just like all four sides. And it's just basically spot on of the Millennium Falcon. So much detail added to it. So that part I do like about it. Then we got the Apex Legends exclusive pops in which these are okay, I guess. I'm not really the biggest fan of like the pink color with uh, Pathfinder. 
I do like the tie-dye color on Lifeline. That is pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of Dude Love a little bit. And then the white translucent Wraith. I guess it's okay, but I'm not really the biggest fan of it. And then I know Mirage. The blue is pretty cool, but I know that this one is available now. Because I've even seen it in like Top Ops videos and stuff that this specific pop is available at GameStop. I don't know about our EB Games yet or any EB Games, but I know for sure GameStop has gotten them. I thought all these were available at this point because I know they have a pre-order up for Wraith on Amazon. But obviously I don't know when like Pathfinder is going to be released that. Maybe like whenever the next Target Con is going to happen, that's probably when it will be released. And then I don't know... We never know when Walmart is actually going to release one, like announce the date and stuff. It's just, you have to literally be on the website and try to find it, refresh a bunch of times. And then the Flintstone Funko Pops, they're pretty cool, I guess. I kind of figured they're going to do obviously a different variant. They don't want to copy the original ones because then I think it will just devalue the original ones by a little bit. So by adding the water buffalo hats and just making more Flintstone Pops that I feel characters that people want and not like those random side characters in my opinion. I actually really like the water buffalo hats that they have on. I want to pick this up to maybe get my Flintstones collection kind of to start. Obviously the original Fred and Barney are pretty expensive pops. Yeah. So uh, this is definitely a cheaper alternative way to go and honestly I find these ones to be a little bit better. With the Apex Legends ones, these are pretty cool actually. I do like how they have a lot of translucency to them the pathfinder of course again is cool another thing i like is with oh i forget what's her name that is lifeline lifeline right i like how they have the winking eye i think that's pretty well executed it's just an easy paint job but it, it gets the job done perfectly i like how she has like the peace sign up too it, it looks cool three of these pops are all right and then the one that's like the full translucent besides the face I don't know how I feel about that one. That one's kind of weird in my opinion. Millennium Falcon, of course, is awesome. I really like the base that it's on as well. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so uh, it's good to see that there's finally a release for the Millennium Falcon. And yeah, I do agree with you with the fact that it's kind of weird having... I always thought that it was weird in general that the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon was offset to the right of the ship. So having a big pop in there, it, it looks weird, like, for the fact that, like, if he was that big in scale, it wouldn't, like, hold up. It would, like, fall over, you know yeah. what I mean? If it was trying to fly. But that being said, I think it's cool. I think it would have been better if they would have done pocket pops and they would have put Chewie beside Han. Yeah. That would have been sweet. I would also like to see some, like, movie moments of, like, inside the Millennium Falcon. Like, maybe, like, a cockpit with the four characters? There could be. There is a set of Star Wars pops that are rumored at the moment, which I'll tell you about after, since I don't really like addressing rumors on the podcast. But yeah. there probably could be with this big set of Star Wars pops that are supposed to be coming out in 2020. Yeah. So Or, like, the, um, I want to call it Turok, but I know it's not Turok. The board game that they play inside the Millennium Falcon. You know what I'm talking about? I With, like, think the hologram so. little characters? Yeah. I would like to see, like, Let the Wookiee Win. That's where that quote's from. I'd like to see, like, a pop movie moment of that. That'd be pretty cool, in my opinion, too. The Lady Sylvanas, I think is what it is. This is all right, I suppose. I have the original one of this pop, which I got with a bundle deal. I think the original is better than this one, though. I don't... I, I'm never really a huge fan of one color pops like this, but because it has like the shading and like from the wash on it, I think it looks all right. I also don't know a whole lot about World of Warcraft. Maybe there's like, I always go to like the statue thing when they do gold pops. It, it looks like a statue. So maybe there's a statue of her in game somewhere. And that's basically what they're kind of copying with that. Yeah. The Reaper pop, I have mixed opinions on it because obviously it, it looks really good. The pumpkin I kind of wish was a little more detailed because in-game the pumpkin does have a lot more going on with it. There's like a lot more shading on it and I believe there's like smoke coming out of like the eyes and the mouth I think if I'm not mistaken. But since it glows in the dark it kind of makes sense that it doesn't really need to have a whole bunch of detail because that's obviously the main focus point of the pop. I do like how all the orange pieces glow in the dark. That makes a lot of sense to me. 
Does even, like, the stock of the pumpkin glow, like the green part? I don't think so. Okay, that's cool. I like that. Of course, the Hunchback and Notre Dame pops are great. Disney pops, I feel like, are never really bad. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into the Disney Funko Pops. Yeah, they're always par, if not better. So there's not much I have to say about them besides they're just fantastically done, like always. I do really like Quasimodo as Fool. Michael Jordan pops, these 10-inch ones, they're all right. I mean, it kind of makes sense to have them. They'll sell well. I, again, don't like the Foot Locker ones because even not just the fact that their shipping apparently isn't that great for quality, but with Foot Lockers around us, I never seem to find Pops there. They never have Pops. Yeah, I think it's only Foot Locker in the States. In the States, yeah, yeah. exactly. The Jolly Bee and the, what is it? Heady Spaghetti. Heady Spaghetti. They're pretty cool. I mean, there's so many Jolly Bee Pops now that it's kind of getting old a little bit. Yeah. Like the first couple, it was like, okay, this is cool. But this one is kind of refreshing because of the Chicken Joy bucket. And, of course, you got Hetty Spaghetti, which is kind of funny. And then it's a shame that the Librarian Ghost is apparently not that good because I was pretty hyped for this. I thought it would be pretty cool being translucent. Obviously, like you said, it's it's a ghost, so it makes sense to be translucent. This scene really sticks with me when I seen it as a child. So it's cool to see this. And, like... Yeah, why didn't they do glow-in-the-dark? Like, even if they just did glow-in-the-dark in the the eyes and the teeth, I think that would have, like, made more sense, right? Yeah. Because, like, it looks like they're almost glowing just from the photo. Especially being a Funko Shop exclusive that didn't turn out good. That's just kind of sad. Yeah. So now, obviously, you will now see six photos on your screen, and it'll be the last six, because we are recording this on Tuesday, October 29th. So we won't get to any of the other Funko Pop announcements that will happen after that until the November Part 1 podcast, which, as I said on the last podcast, will be released November, I think, 17th. I'm pretty sure I said that. Obviously, the first one is Chupacabra, which is a Funko Shop exclusive and was released on October 25th at 11 a.m. PST, 2 p.m. EST. Then we have ourselves a a pop-in-a-box exclusive Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket, in which this released, I think, a while back, like a few months ago, but Funko is only announcing them now as available now. Then we have, from the movie, The Warriors, which a lot of people are super hyped for. We have ourselves here the Punk's Leader. We have, I can't even pronounce it, I think it's Chochi, Chochis, Chochis, I don't know. But that's the guy with the baseball bat. And it's, actually, there's two people with the bit. One with the afro and the bandana. Then we got Swan on the bottom left. And then we have Luther from the evil gang that wants to take down the Warriors. If you haven't seen the movie yet. Which, it's not a spoiler because that movie's been out for like 40 years now. So, <laughs> Then we got ourselves a Box Lunch exclusive glow-in-the-dark Icy Viserion. Which, unknown of when that's going to be released but that'll be released soon and also with the warriors pops those are expected to be released as early as january 2020 then once again actually yesterday on the funko shop october 28th at 11 a.m pst 2 p.m est we have ourselves a glow-in-the-dark venomized storm from the venom series and last but not least, announced by Blizzard, an additional pop added to BlizzCon, we have ourselves what they're calling a Ribbit variant of Lucio, which obviously Blizzard exclusive. It's actually available online along with Pumpkin Reaper now on the Gear Store. But you can, if you can't access the Gear Store for some reason, then you can go to BlizzCon, which they'll have it at their booth there from November 1st to November 3rd. So, starting off with the Chupacabra, which I didn't really know what a Chupacabra was. We did have a conversation before the podcast starts about Chupacabra. And I guess the detail on this, pretty cool detail with the teeth especially and the tongue. I'm kind of speechless about this only because, like, I'm not sure what to describe this as. Like, I just noticed now, like, part of the ear looks like it's been bitten off at one point. And then it's got this, like... I don't even know what to call it. There's like this like blue and teal like almost scales it looks like on it. Even though Chupacabra looks like a dog and should have fur. Then we have Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket which this pop is pretty cool. I know you can only get this pop if you have a subscription to Pop in a Box. You can't get it like on the website itself if you're a non-subscriber. I guess I love the added detail of Jiminy Cricket. 
people would buy this because of the fact that Jiminy Cricket is also like super vaulted and super expensive at this point by itself. So adding it with this Pinocchio, which I don't think there's been a Pinocchio yet, if I'm not mistaken. I can't really. There really? might have been, but I off the top of my head, I can't remember about a Pinocchio. Realistically, I could check the Funko app right now to see if there's a Pinocchio. But I like the detail of like how it's wooden and everything. And then how the nose is obviously the nose has to grow because then why would anyone buy a Pinocchio pop if the nose wasn't growing out? And just the overall outfit, it's like, yeah, that looks like Pinocchio. Then the Warriors pops, those are pretty cool. I seen uh, the Punk's leader is pretty cool. That's the one with the rollerblades, which I remember that scene. I actually watched that movie. I think it was after the Baseball Fury pop got announced for New York Comic Con. I just wanted mm -hmm. to watch it, and it's a pretty good movie. Shoshis, I think that's a or Chochis, I don't know. I remember this character, he's in like the beginning of the movie and I think he ends up dead after because this one guy who runs the essentially it's this gang war. It's like every a lot of gangs just like come together for like one big fight and see which one is the last gang standing. The guy gets shot by Luther and the blame is put on Chochis, so like Chochis gets like beaten up to his death for it. <laughs> Quick little update as I'm editing this podcast. It's actually Cleon, not Shoshis, that gets framed for killing Cyrus by Luther and ends up getting beaten to his death. Just wanted to let everyone know that. So let's continue to this podcast. And then Swan is basically who ends up being the temporary leader since Shoshis passed away. Basically looks just like him. I like the added bat detail that they have with that. And then we have luther which i'm not exactly sure what's in his hand oh it might be a gun but i can't tell it's yeah i was thinking a... gun it kind of also looks like beer bottles i don't know yeah or like some sort of binocular i don't know but yeah this kind of looks like him too these are pretty cool i'm not sure if i'm gonna get them but they're cool the icy viserion from game of thrones i don't know how it is glow in the dark so i can't really give the full opinion on it but from what i'm looking at i guess it's it's okay I still think we've seen the best of Game of Thrones pops at this point, and that there's not really any like good Game of Thrones pops anymore, in my opinion. Then the Venomized Storm. When I seen this, I didn't like how the glam shot showed how it glowed in the dark, but there was like these photos that got released of how it glowed in the dark, and it's awesome. The white parts glow in the dark, and the essentially, I don't know if I call it lightning or whatever, also glows in the dark too, which is pretty sweet. I like that little detail. I remember Venomized Storm was actually one of the better Venomized Pops from that recent wave with like yeah. Venomized Groot, Venomized Thanos, and Daredevil, and all that. I remember it was Storm and X-20, which actually X-23 was supposed to be a glow-in-the-dark from what I heard, like even the normal variant, but I guess that never happened hmm. because there's no glow-in-the-dark sticker on it. But it's cool that they made one glow-in-the-dark, especially this one. This one's cool glow-in-the-dark. Maybe they'll make a glow-in-the-dark X-23 in the future. Maybe that'll also be a Funko Shop exclusive. Who knows? Then last but not least, we have the Ribbit version of Lucio, which looks pretty cool, actually, looking at it now. <laughs> kind of looks like us right now, wearing some headsets. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and then uh, in his like one arm, it's kind of like a speaker, it looks like. I think you can elaborate more on that because that's an Overwatch pop. And then I don't exactly know... What is, like, pose is supposed to be? Because, like, on the bottom of his feet, I don't know if he's, like, sliding and it's making some sort of effect or... I kind of like this, like, logo on his chest. It kind of reminds me... Oh, what the heck was that? It was, like, a music service or it was, like, something like that. And it looks like LimeWire? And it's not... No, it's not LimeWire. It's, uh... I can't remember the name. And I don't even think this should be an unanswered question because this will take me a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a music service or not, but it had some sort of logo that kind of looked like this. And then the headset's pretty cool, and just the eyes are cool, because I think from what I'm looking at, these eyes are going to be huge compared to normal pop eyes. And it's got a cool mouth, so... Yeah, I can see what you're saying. The eyes, it would make sense for the eyes to be big, because on the actual skin, the eyes are huge. It's a frog head, obviously. So basically, he rollerblades. Okay. So that's basically what he's doing, and then there's like, I don't know, energy coming out from the back of the skates. His gun... Basically, it like it is a speaker essentially. It shoots like sound rays out, okay, and like some either like deal small amounts of damage, or you can heal your teammates with it, or you can like there's like one where it's like a big blast and you can like launch people like far away. Okay. You know what I mean? This pop's really cool. 
I do have some like sentimental value with it because it's the first skin I ever pulled in Overwatch back when I first started playing years ago. I actually pulled the gold variant of this skin, but they're pretty much the same exact skin. I do really like this pop. Of course, I'm going to have to add it to my ever-growing Overwatch collection, which is currently taking up a lot of room on my floor. Yeah. <laughs> There's no rooms on the shelves at the moment. Yeah, I need to uh, buy some more of those shelving units. Venomized Storm is really cool. The Glow in the Dark does look like it's well done. So, of course, we've seen this pop before. This is just Glow in the Dark now. But it's deserved. And yeah, I agree exactly with what you said. We've seen the best of Game of Thrones now, and it's just... They're just dragging it on. They'll sell them, so I, I understand why they do it. The Warriors ones are really good. Like, you don't even have to have that Warriors logo in the bottom, and you can, like, pretty much know exactly what it's from. Yeah. Which is cool. I like to see that with Pops. They're very detailed for, like, a kind of off-skewed set of Pops, and I like that about them. The Pinocchio is really well done. I'm surprised if we haven't seen a Pinocchio before, because, uh... Yeah, I'm checking the Funko app right now. Okay. (laughs) And, yeah, like you said, it's cool to see Jiminy Cricket, especially, yeah, being vaulted and all. This pop's really cool. I'm upset that you have to be a subscriber to Pop in the Box to get one for retail price, because I would very much like to have this pop. And then the Chupacabra. I really like this pop a lot. I like how much detail there is in it. I love the scales on the side of, like, the arm, and I'm assuming the back. I like how the teeth are all mangled, and how the tongue's hanging out, and of course one ear's flopped, and the other one's bitten off. There's there's a lot going on, and honestly, there's one thing that could make this pop 10 out of 10 for me, and that would be a flocked variant. I think the flocked variant would look very cool in this pop, because he's not all fur, so you don't have to flock the whole thing. And then with the scales, I think it would, like really pop out that like it's like scaly when there's like hair around them too yeah you know what i mean if this was flocked it would be a 10 out of 10 for me but where it sits it's definitely a solid like 8.5 pop this is this is a really great pop in my opinion all right so confirm there has been another pinocchio pop it was from the original disney lineup and it's worth 144 dollars canadian on the funko app so along and he with doesn't separate... have his nose he kind of does, but it's oh, not really? as good. Let me as, see. Yeah, it, it kind of does, but it's not as good as the, oh, yeah, as the current little, one. Oh, yeah, tiny that, little pecker. That's what she said. <laughs> and then along with Jiminy Cricket, which is the one after it. So Pinocchio's number six. Jiminy Cricket's number seven in the original Disney lineup or that. So now we are finished already with just these Funko Pop announcements. And we are heading over for Poptistics now, which... If you remember from, I think it was one of the July podcast. Actually, it would, it would have been the only July podcast, or July Part 2, actually, for the Top 10 list. We introduced a segment called Poptistics, which basically determines some statistics about our Top 10 list and what to kind of expect. So I'm going to get to that before we get to our October 2019 list. So first of all, we have listed a total combined of 180 different pops, or different sections to put pops in. So 98 out of the 180 pops that have been in the top 10 list are exclusive pops, which rounded off is 54%. 55 out of 90 pops, which I know I said 180, but I'm talking about a separate top 10 list. 55 out of 90 pops will be different in the top 10 list from each top 10 list. So 61% of the time, a pop will be different. 35 out of 98 of the exclusives are convention exclusives, with the second most being Funko Shop exclusive, which is 9. And then out of the 180 pops, 145 of them have been your normal 3.75 inch pops, while the second most are 6 inch pops, which is 9 out of 180 pops. And then out of the 180 pops, 27 of them have been in the television lineup, while The second most is 24 out of 180 from Disney. So that is the Poptistic. But now we're going to move on to the top 10 list. Obviously, like usual, we're going to start off with MD Shady at number 10. Now number 10 is the Flintstones 2-pack. Just because I think it was really well done. And I think it's 
I don't know if it's going to kill the value of the original two of the original. No, I don't think this one will. I said if it was completely remade like the original ones. Like yeah, they didn't have any yeah. Titles, it could have. I still think that, it. at least in my experience with this, is that I'm going to buy the two-pack and I'm not going to go buy the originals because I think these ones are better and at a fraction of the price that the other ones cost. Yeah. So that's why it made it to number 10. They're well done. Two-pack bundle, not a two-pack which means that it was two separate pops that were sold together because we know that people would buy Fred more than they would buy Barney, so they sold both of them at the same time. So I'm just gonna assume that Fred is the actual number 10 pick so that we can move along with this. So let's get right to the podcast. My number 10, and I wish this was higher, but it is where it is because there's just so much hype for a lot of the other ones that I had chosen. And that is the Barnes & Noble exclusive Thing in Disguise. I love this pop. It's sweet. It's got the little trench coat and the hat. And I actually, I forgot to mention to you the other day, but I actually watched Fantastic Four again the other oh, day. Oh, did you? Just to see, like, that part and everything. And it's just basically spot on. Even, like, the little grin on his face is like, uh, and all that. It was well done. It's my favorite exclusive, obviously. It's at number 10 because it didn't get as much hype as it should have. And it didn't get as much hype as the other ones, the nine ahead of it did. So uh, that's why Thing in Disguise is number 10 on my list. So my number nine now, which was originally number eight, is the Darth Vader with the light up and the sounds. Okay. That pop just, it hits home for me. You don't really have to do much to it besides adding that bass and like a few little tweaks with Darth Vader that make it look really good and... I mean, lights and sounds, you can't go wrong. Yeah. My number nine is Waldo. Waldo was super hyped, but at the same time, and I forgot to mention it when we were talking about Waldo, it didn't get a 100% like hyped. Everyone liked it because the international people know Waldo is Wally. That's what they yeah. call him as Wally. So they're like, when you sell these international, are you going to put where's Wally and not where's Waldo? But I don't know. That's kind of where, like, the non-hype comes for for this, Bob. Makes sense. But I think mainly this made it at number nine because of my point about the eyes earlier. Is that the eyes should have been bigger. Or, sorry, they should have been smaller. I feel like they're too big. But everything else is basically good. Mm. Plus, it's also, like, simplistic detail. So it's not, like, super, super detailed. Yeah. Uh, to the point where it can make it past probably, like, the top five. So that's why mm. Waldo is at number nine for me. All right, my number eight is the Chupacabra. Now, he could have been higher on my list if it was flocked. Probably could have made it to number one, honestly. But it's going to be numbers, what did I say, eight? eight? Yeah, number eight. Just because I thought that there was a couple pops that were a little bit better than this pop. They all came pretty close. Like, it was hard to decide what order to put these pops in because they were all pretty good, the ones that I picked, I feel. But Chupacabra had to make it to number eight just because not flocked. So my number eight, and originally I had the original variant of this pop in this section, but I thought that the other variant ended up being better as of last night. And that is the LA Comic Con slash Hot Topic shared exclusive Glow in the Dark Corrupted Venom. A lot of people are super hyped about this, especially the Glow in the Dark version. And why I switched from the normal variant to the glow in the dark is because last night they actually did do a new stock on Hot Topics website of the glow in the dark variant and it sold out in less than 15 minutes. So talk about hype right there. Not as fast as like Funko Shop Pops or some Funko Shop Pops would sell, but it's still sold at least less than a half an hour that it's sold out. The detail is awesome on it. That's why it's way higher than Thing in Disguise and Waldo. So much detail to it. The glow in the dark variant, like you mentioned on last, it does like have like the spots that it should glow in the dark. It highlights like some of the best parts, like the little I guess I'd call it bullseye. I don't know what to exactly call it. Yeah. The bullseye type thing. And the like logo on the chest and kind of the teeth glow in the dark too. So that's pretty cool with that. Yeah, that's basically why it's at number eight. Cool. All right, number seven. This is where these couple pops here in the middle is really where it kind of got hard to like decide which one was better than others, why were they better. So number seven is the Harley Quinn in the Robin outfit. 
Okay. I think this pop was like, you go to a restaurant and they overcook your steak. It's well done. <laughs> I don't know why, because normally pops like this don't really make it to my list. Like a lot of like superhero pops in general don't make it to my list just because I feel like, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. They're all just kind of meh to me. But this one, it just had that spark. I thought it was really good. My number seven is the previews exclusive Metallic Thanos Pop Deluxe. Super detailed, super hyped. Yeah, the hype definitely was probably just as good as Waldo. Got way more detail than basically most of these. Corrupted Venom had quite a bit of detail, but this kind of, my personal reaction was up on this, especially the snapping of the fingers. That was really awesome. And just those kinds of details are, like, why I like collecting Funko Pops. It's, like, it's crazy that Funko can just capture that kind of detail into a Funko Pop. I don't know if I'm going to get it yet, but it definitely deserved to be in my top ten list. So that is the Metallic Thanos. All right, so this means we're on to number six. And so number six is where things got, like, hairy for me because I had to add in one pop that I kind of let slide through the list, but I later on decided it did need a spot. And that is the Millennium Falcon with Han Solo, of course. Now, if they would have done the smaller pops inside and added, like, Chewbacca, it obviously would have made it higher. Probably not too much higher, but at that it is a spectacular pop. It's huge. I can't wait to take it out of the box. And yeah, the pop is. Spo- I don't know if it's the box size or the pop size, but supposedly all together, it's 13 inches. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be a huge pop. Yeah. For pop rides. I basically can't wait to have it as a display piece, like either in the middle of a table or with the rest of my Star Wars stuff. It's gonna be sweet. My number six is also a Star Wars pop, but it's not the Millennium Falcon. This is the New York Comic Con slash Target shared exclusive Sand Trooper. I loved the way this pop looked. Absolutely crazy the amount of detail they put in this. A lot of people are hyped about it, and I don't blame them. Like, it's such a good pop. It looks better than most of, like, the Stormtrooper pops that Funko have made. It's probably the best trooper pop they've made, in my opinion. That's why it basically made practically the middle of the list, but it didn't make it in the top five just because there's just super amount of hype with the next five that I will talk about. Okay, so yeah, I think when I was talking about the Millennium Falcon, I think when I said in the middle of the list, I think I said at five. I meant to say just before five, obviously six. So, number five, my five to one is all perfect order now because of the Millennium Falcon kind of screwing things up. So this is exactly how I intended it to be when I wrote down my list. Number five is the pop in a box, Pinocchio. It's a great pop. You kind of get a two for deal with it, with Jiminy Cricket being on his nose. I don't know why. I just, I really, really like this pop. I'm not even that huge of a fan of Pinocchio either. Like, of course I've seen it, but it's weird. There's some pops that are like this where I just, I think they're very well executed and... I'm just upset that you have to be a subscriber to Pop in a Box because not a huge fan of Pop in a Box. My number five is the Quasimodo as Fool Funko Pop. So much detail into this pop, and it's crazy how they executed this pop very well. They got, like, the cape, the scepter, the crown, and it's just, it's so awesome. They captured a happy moment of Quasimodo because he felt like he was being very appreciated. I always love the facial expressions they put on the Quasimodo Funko Pops. Like I said earlier, it's awesome. And this pop definitely deserves some recognition. This could be a potential top 50 Funko Pops of 2019 list that we'll be doing in the next couple of months. It definitely could be. I don't know yet, but detail, hype, and my own personal reaction all bundled up into one is why it's at number five. And that's basically like the rest of the list also. So... So, I guess that means we're on to number four, and number four for me is Waldo. I think this probably could have made it up to number two if the face wasn't so offset because of those eyes, and maybe didn't have such a Peter Griffin-looking face, in in my opinion at least. It definitely would have made it to, like, number two for me, because I think it's, like, it's one of those pops where everyone and their grandma can buy this pop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's good to see pops like that. And 
that is basically the main reason why it made it so high in my list. I forgot to mention it once again on the Waldo thing, but a lot of people, just as a joke, are hoping that Funko gives like each store like one Waldo pop. So then it's like, where's Waldo? So oh, you have to look in the store no. to go find the Waldo pop. I don't know. That's funny, but I don't, I don't, I, <laughs> no, no. Oh, man. But yeah, moving on to my number four, which is the Hot Topic exclusive Marty McFly as Cowboy or Clint Eastwood. I kind of figured that pop would be on your list. And this pop is wicked in detail and so much hype because a lot of people want more Back to the Future pops. And especially last night, if you've seen on like pages like Disc Pops, you may have seen rumors about potentially some Back to the Future pops. But anyways, this Marty McFly is sweet. It's so good in detail. Like I said, the hype was just through the roof on this. Hopefully when Hot Catch comes out in the beginning of November, there's still some at my local Hot Topic because then I'll definitely pick one up using a Hot Catch. My personal reaction through the roof because I love Back to the Future. And now this pop specifically wants me to get basically all the Back to the Future pops, except the fact that it's going to be kind of hard to find the... I forget what it's exclusive to, but it's for Back to the Future 2, and it's Marty McFly on the hoverboard. And then there is the glow-in-the-dark Doc Brown that's worth like three, dollars $400 Canadian on the Funko app. I've seen it before. I just don't know if I'm willing to pay that much money for that pop. So I could get the whole set except that $400 Doc Brown pop. But that's why it's number four. Back to the Future, one of my favorite movies, definitely hits the top five. So we've got to number three... I believe this is the first time that we have pops on this list that are not matching up in number, but we both have them on our top ten list. And my number three is the Barnes & Noble exclusive, The Thing. I love this pop so much. I'm definitely going to buy one, whether I have to pay some scalper. Some price on the a, secondary a, market. A, yeah, a jacked up, yeah, a jacked up price. I would really like to have this one for my collection. I actually want to get quite a few of the Fantastic Four Pops. This is a necessity piece for my collection, though. My number three. Yeah, that's what we're on. Yep. Number three, three, three. Number three for me is the Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon Pop Rides. It only made it to number three. If it honestly was like pocket pop size for Han Solo and maybe added a Chewie, it definitely would have been number one for sure like hands down would have been number one but just that little bit of missed detail on it is why it only made to number three and why it didn't go higher however the detail suite hype was sweet on this from all the funko fanatics and my own personal reaction was huge when i first found out about this so that's why it's at number three all right number two 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 and what better way to have two than with a two pack and that two pack is the dark crystal two pack I forgot about that one, actually. So much detail. Such great pops. Necessity piece for my collection to go on with having all the Jim Henson pops. Also, it's two characters that I feel like you need to have for the Dark Crystal. I still need to buy quite a few of the Dark Crystal pops from this new wave that they got going on. I found these pops, like, astonishing, almost. I love the Wanderer, especially how much detail they can put into, like, just the skin itself on the Wanderer looks so great. I couldn't see my top ten list not having a Jim Henson pop on it if there is a Jim Henson pop in that month. My number two from the Fantastic Four set, it is Doctor Doom. They did such a good job on this pop. People were hyping because we finally got another Doctor Doom pop that we don't have to pay, like, $400 for and so much detail with this it's got so much hype my personal reaction was huge on this it's like wow dr doom he's even got a pose with this one the original one has him like what basically all original pops do and they didn't just have like, a pose it's just side by side with their arms this one's got like a pose of like the you can't really see what i'm doing if you're listening to this but i'm doing this like motion of like his hands out and it's like it's the exact pose that the pop has and very good in detail. I like the white eyes instead of the black eyes on the original one. It kind of stands out with the pop since it's kind of like a dark pop. Like it's got this like dark green color and like silver type dealio. It would have been cool if this pop was actually metallic. Now as I think about it. Yeah, for sure. But either way, this pop is great. And now we are at the number one list 
for each of us. So, MD, what is your number one? I'm not sure what your number one is, but my number one is the flocked Smokey the Bear. Ah, uh, I should have known. <laughs> I should have, like, I should have known that should have been on your list. I just, once again, it's like the first half, I kind of just, like, forgot for some reason. Yeah, I actually kind of forgot about the Sand Trooper that you had on yours. Like, I was like, damn, that was pretty nice pop. Yeah. But yeah, Smokey the Bear, I love Flock Pops, so automatically get some points for that. And then it's, like, kind of an ad icon in a sense, so that gets more points in my book. It was very well done. It looks good, and, like, I don't know, it's just good promotion for the association, I guess I would call it. It's not really a company. It's goddamn Smokey the Bear. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I, I love this pop so much. I think it's, like, self-explanatory. My number one is actually a pop you've already mentioned on your list. I knew it! I know what it is! And it's the electronic Darth Vader. I knew it! <laughs> it's so... <laughs> Videos got released by Entertainment Earth on how this works and everything. And it's just so good. It's actually different from most of the electronic ones they've done or like light up ones, kind of like the Christmas ones they announced. And that the way it works is that you press on the head because it's a bobblehead and then it really? makes the sound and the lights and everything. And there is, as far as I know, there's two different sounds with this. One is you press the head and it's the lightsaber trying to turn on. So it's like zzz. And then the other one is him breathing. That's huh. the sound with it, with the lightsaber on and everything. It's just that kind of detail that Funko is willing to do with Funko Pops now is awesome. Huge personal reaction, and for sure I'm getting, like, I know I'm for sure getting this and probably the Marty McFly out of all the ones I listed off. So that is why the electronic Darth Vader is number one on yeah. my list. Yeah. Like, this Darth Vader pop is so solid, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be on the top 50 list. That's all the time we got for today's edition of a Funko Pop Gas. Make sure you like our Facebook page, follow our Twitter page, and also follow our Instagram page, at a Funko Pop Gas. And also make sure you better like this video, comment on what your top 10 lists are, or what are your favorite pops, if you don't want to make a huge top 10 list for this month and press the subscribe button and press the little bell beside it to be notified of when future content like more podcasts if you didn't hear the last one we are going weekly as of january 3rd 2020 and we got some more content coming out in 2020 more videos more frequently with the podcast going every friday and then videos i'll be doing on this channel every monday and sometimes wednesdays so two to three days a week on the channel and it's gonna be awesome so, thank you all for watching, and see you guys next time. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Peace in, peace out.